one school committee working session. Uh, this is a public meeting being held at the Hopkinton High School Library. And the purpose tonight, we have one agenda item, and that is to um, collaborate on Dr. Kavanaugh's summative evaluation for this year. So before we get started, I would like to invite you all to rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we are just waiting for our colleague, Mr. Markey. So he's on his way. He'll be here in 15 minutes. Uh, while we wait for Joe, I um, just want to make sure you have all the materials necessary. We have a um, summative evaluation form, which everybody should have, have filled out on their own. We have um, the rubric for the indicators that was provided by, um, I guess, Bessie. Uh, we have Dr. Kavanaugh's uh, self-assessment on her goals. Her, I think it was called summative, mm -hmm. yeah, summative assessment, yep. Kavanaugh. And we have Dr. Kavanaugh's um, self-assessment on her indicators, or at least uh, evidence for her indicators, which was called superintendent's evaluation rubric indicators. Um, and I think that's it. So Great. our goal tonight is to go through each goal and each indicator, talk about where we individually uh, ranked Dr. Kavanaugh, and then come up with a committee uh, rating, and then hopefully some key points in the narrative to support the rating. And then leaving this meeting, um, we can all go back, uh, fine tune any writing um, or information in our own individual evaluations and then I will ask you to submit those to me by Tuesday so that I can work on compiling the composite based on the information from tonight and uh, just to be clear Dr. Kavanaugh receives um, all of our individual evaluations but the only one that counts for your review of course is the composite from the committee um, so one other um, point of organization when we do an evaluation, we are evaluating Dr. Kavanaugh on the goals as written that we agreed to and voted on um, and the indicators according to the rubric. So sometimes it's tempting to look back on the year and think, oh, this was great, or oh, I wish we'd done that. Um, and if it falls outside of the specific goals and indicators that we're evaluating, then it's really not relevant for this, but could be um, input for next year. And sometime over the summer, hopefully, We'll be back on track and we'll be talking about goals for fiscal year 22. And that's a good time to bring up um, indicators we might have seen that might be of interest for next year or talk about goals for next year. Anybody have any questions about this? Can we just apologize to Dr. Kavanaugh before we begin? <laughs> yes, absolutely, this because this is the most awkward thing. I can't no. think of anything more horrible. And I have watched her for three years sit so patiently <laughs> And calmly, and it's just, I'm amazed that you can do that. You know, none of this is personal. Of course. You know, <laughs> this, this is all, I don't know what this is. It, it, I wouldn't do it this way <laughs> if I had my druthers. Yes, well said. And the other thing that I le I've learned, um, which was sort of new to me in my first year on the committee doing this, is that in education, with this rubric, you can tell by what's like in bold. Proficient is sort of the expectation. Mm -hmm. um, so... When you look at the, um, the indicators, proficient is on the form in like big, black, bold print. And so that's kind of where the expectation is. And then you sort of look at what was actually done against the rubric and see if there's an opportunity for exemplary. And um, sometimes, though not that often, uh, you might find a needs improvement and call it out. But it's totally um, normal to have a lot of proficient um, coming from the business side, I always think of continuous improvement. I, the first year, I'm like, oh, where's all the needs improvement? I need to improve so many things. And it's just really not exactly how the norm is in education. 
Yeah, I um, I found the same thing. I spent a long time looking up needs improvement to see how punitive punitive it is in education as opposed to in other areas that I've been in, and it does seem like it's a big negative step mm -hmm. it as is. opposed to a very minor negative step like what I'm used to. So that was definitely uh, interesting data to find. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm glad you looked it up because it it is a little bit of different culture, and so we, you know, we do our evaluation based on the domain that we're in, which is education. So right. for anyone watching at home, it may seem different to what you do at work. Um, but uh, the, the, I guess, is it, who, who provides the rubric? Is it Desi or Desi? It's Desi, yes. Desi. So the DESI rubric, um, which was submitted uh, or distributed with our last um, meeting packet from last week, is um, very clear and easy to follow. And I like the new revised version. So, so I continue to stall while we wait for Joe. I interrupt it yeah. for one quick question, yeah. um, which will help buy us a little time. Um, okay. So I know I was looking at this earlier, but I can't find where the information is that Dr. Cavanaugh has, had put together. Ah. So I don't know if I somehow I'm going to share with you when I was this, looking at it. It's in a May 6 email. I can reshare if you'd like. Um, sure. I, I can share this too. Yeah, May 6. Oh, you know what? I, I think I do have it still. I, I had to fish you around. That's not, but I, I'm not. Yeah. I linked it um, to a, <clears throat> an informational slide. My glasses are foggy. I've got it here. You have it? Thank you. Yeah. The, the two documents, the goals, and then the indicators? I have the one that was done on May 6th, and then I have all the ones that you sent. Okay, I just sent separate. you a link to a slide that has um, the goals and the focus indicators is a hot link in each. I hate to get started without Joe. I have this weird delay on my computer with my email. I have to say, the soundtrack tonight is fantastic. Is, well, what's the game being played? Does anyone know? Uh, it's wrestling. It's a wrestling okay. meet. They get the best uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so nice we were saying to hear kids doing yeah. what kids do enthusiastically. Yes, know? and people cheering them on. and Yeah, these are normal sounds. Oh, it's great. All righty. So these are uh, links in, because I did see the slide that you had sent here. These are... Yep, the, the two red with the goals word that's underlined. Yeah, okay, so that's why I didn't see it in there. I... And the focus indicators are a link. You did such a good job in cutting and pasting this year. I have to say, you probably even typed some of those out. <laughs> for the descriptions? I think I cut and pasted. I mean, I had to struggle so much, and I did it completely incorrectly for years. And now she's taking care of it. Well, I'm glad. Um, we can actually talk about one more thing before. I I'm going to be looking for one other person on the committee to um, help help me with another set of eyes on the on the composite draft. So. Um, it could be Nancy as vice chair, but it could be anybody. I went back to the procedure to see if we had identified which person on the committee. We didn't. It's just important that we have another set of eyes help me take what we talk about tonight and make sure I reflect it um, faithfully in our composite. So if anybody's interested, that would be work that we would do between Tuesday night probably and Thursday, next Thursday the 20th. Do we want to wait and see if Joe has... And here's Joe. Here he is. Hi, Joe. Hello. We've been doing procedural review while we wait. <laughs> oh, thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was just saying that um, that I was going to be looking for another set of eyes among the four of you to help me um, make sure that the composite I put together is a faithful representation of what we talk about tonight. And it will probably be work based on your work schedule between Tuesday night and Thursday afternoon. So I don't know if anybody's interested. 
do you want to do that? I, I only am, if it's a preference. I am am happy to do it if nobody else wants to. But if somebody really actually wants to do it, I'm happy to let somebody I else. I want to, it. but I don't think I will have time in that window. Okay. I'd like to, but sorry. Yeah. yeah I'm having the same issue right, trying I'm to figure out these Okay, please. Thank you, Nancy. So you, you. you're on. I'm on. Excellent. So thank you. So so Nancy and I will. This is good because you take good notes too. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take notes, but uh, we will um, be pulling the composite draft together, and then real time next week when we officially deliver the uh, the summative evaluation. If there are minor edits or things you want to emphasize, you can do it at the meeting on the 20th. All right. So without any further ado, um, let's start by talking about. Oops, the goals, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so Dr. Kavanaugh has um, sent us her goals. So goals, let's take it in the order of the evaluation form. Yeah. I think that's easier. Mm -hmm. um, so the student, student learning goal, uh, which was actually Dr. Kavanaugh's goal four, uh, in grades K to six, use Fontes and Pinnell interactive read aloud texts to grow students' cultural awareness and their ability to process text. Students will engage in strategic actions such as inferring, visualizing, connecting, and synthesizing. Ultimately, students will be able to facilitate rich conversations about text with little or no teacher intervention. Uh, where do people land on this one? As I was saying, uh, Joe, before you got here, that um, in education, the default tends to be met or proficient, and then we sort of make arguments or cases for one way or the other okay. based on evidence. Anybody want to share? So I, I did exceed it. Um, I thought that this particular goal was not only well met, um, there was a lot of stuff put in place for it in the middle of the pandemic with um, extra testing, with you know all the all the changes in curriculum that happened and so i just felt like the fact that this particular goal was met in totality pretty much in the middle of everything else that was happening um just made me feel like it hit the exceeded mark okay did anyone have a different rating i had met because I was trying um, to think outside the realm of the pandemic because met means rigorously arrived at or achieved, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't, I mean, we're still measuring, are we not? The reading accomplishments of kids from the last year? I think, I, I, I believe we have our star data for K to six. I think that the star data that you have yeah. is winter data. Yeah. Data. We will be doing star again so that we know where kids are. But yes, we've done QRI, BAS, and you no, know, I do. Some of the things that you see in the goal are not things that we had promised originally. So um, I know that we've been talking about the co teaching model consultants that have come in to Elmwood and Marathon. Those were kind of guaranteed going in, but bringing in the other consultants, Amy Wilson, to help us with the placement from pre-K to K, as well as the two specialists um, from Leslie, they are really here to help us with our kids who, you know, we've got a lot of people trained in, in Wilson, Orton Gillingham, Linda Moodbell, but we want to make sure that what we're doing with those um, programs is actually appropriate for our students who are identified through our dyslexia screen or through an outside diagnosis. Um, so we have brought them in as well because you find that you get to grade five and we've been doing, say, for example, LLI for years. And then why is it that we have kids who aren't making the appropriate progress with a tool like that? So there were a couple of things we did add in along the way. And, and I really liked that, and, and I love that you were bringing in the dyslexia specialists. Um, it's just hard for me to imagine this year as offering the students the same kind of comprehensive reading instruction 
And so if I do exceed it in a year where we only met with the kids every other day, is, is that the new bar? So I, I'm just hesitant for that reason. I also had met on this goal. Um, I found myself in like a met plus, exceeded minus. I was like, you know, you kind of go through it. But um, I felt sort of differently about other goals. But this particular goal, I kind of felt like we set high standards and we met high standards. Um, but I, I do think contextually with the pandemic and still getting there and doing extra, I, I could be open to some conversation. Yeah, I would say met uh, based on the way the goals worded, especially too. I mean, it's it's um, in response to COVID nineteen, create a strategic plan to be submitted to DESI. That was done, met, and shared with the community. Met. Sorry, uh, this is the this student is learning goal. goal. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, did we already do that one? Goal four. No, we're, we're taking it in the order of the evaluation form. Oh, got it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. It's yep. goal four. Yeah. What did you have for goal four? No, I won't comment then. I'm all set. You didn't have any goals? Okay. No, no, no. So I actually, I, I checked both boxes both <laughs> because I was on the fence between the two. And I, it, the one thing that I was kind of thinking back to, with, if you look at the cultural awareness piece, I know that a lot of texts were purchased that, with that intention specifically yeah. early on in, in this difficult year. Um, but I, like both of you, I did have some thoughts about the limits of the pandemic and kind of what the bar would be. I also felt like I didn't want every category I checked to end up being the exceeds. Exceeds. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Um, yes, that's my impulse, I, so I, I wanted to quiet that a little bit. Yeah, I so, think for me the dyslexia thing is what pushed oh, it yeah. over yeah. because Meg brought that up after the goal was set during yep. one of our meetings and the fact that it was then incorporated and done once again in the middle of this busy, crazy year. It, it just felt like that was the extra thing that pushed me over. Um, so. but, but they were considered before then, these specialists to be brought in, right, Carol? The, the two Leslie people, no, they, are, they, they were add-ons this year. Okay. Donna Simone is a yes. She's been working with us for some time. Amy Wilson is also new. But we started the dyslexia screening because oh, of the, the state dyslexia guidance screening. Yes, a year yes, ago. Yes, I'm so. sorry. Correct. Yep. Yeah. We have five goals to do. So let's let's yeah. say that we're hovering between met and exceeded. Yep. And Which let's is come exactly. Split yeah, we don't need yeah. to come to consensus. Yeah. So it's fine that each person give their opinion, and then you'll figure out how to summarize that, right? Mm, I don't want to leave this meeting without... Yeah. Oh, we an agreement we, by we, the group. We don't. Oh, okay. Because it, it has to be the groups, mm -hmm. the groups evaluation. So. But, but what if four of us think one thing and one thinks the other? Wouldn't you just go with the majority at that point? That would definitely yeah, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think. Okay. Do we have a majority on this one? It, it sounds like. Every, I, I felt like we had one exceeded, one met, and two that were s split in the middle. Unless you want to. I was. I was. The fence. I was more like a met plus. Okay. And you were more like a probably exceeded minus. <laughs> So and and I'll, I'll say met because for the same okay, reason. So that would that would be the tiebreaker right there. Okay. Was, yeah. But I, I'd like to but, yeah. just sort of pencil that in and then come yeah. back because it, I was also um, sort of balancing the review. So right or wrong, the professional practice goal um, I put in here was goal three. I mean, some of these goals span multiple categories, but um, let's talk about goal three which was continue to grow communication between families and the superintendent and grow relationships with elected officials. I put exceeded on this one. I did too. I think Dr. Kavanaugh personally answered 7,000 or more emails um, with detail to address student issues aside from the videos and the traffic videos and the, um, the hangout hours and the yeah. public forums and the surveys I mean it was just a year of constant communication and what I really liked about this year's communication was the increasing the two-way communication with the community that was increasing um, and in addition to it all some very insightful blog posts about topics that had nothing to do with COVID but had everything to do with students and learning and, and growth so I put exceeded on this one but I agree that was amazing you never bared your teeth or frothed at the mouth <laughs> and I did on a weekly basis. I, 
I also put exceeded, but the other thing that I was thinking of was sort of the, um, the relationship with some of our town partners and all these huddles I would hear about you were having on Sundays uh, in the, the hours in which most of the town um, was not working. And I know you had a lot of different areas within the town you were collaborating with other than the school, the school committee, the school community, and the people that we traditionally look at the communication that we see right in front of us, so. I had almost successfully forgotten the huddle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> did, did anyone have a different, besides exceeded, did anyone have a, a met? Or? I initially had a met. However, listening to all of you, I think I'm definitely on exceeded now. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I actually put exceeded when I went to the, the actual uh, focus yeah. uh, indicators. So it just didn't bubble up in my page, but yeah, based on everything you've said, it's exactly why I put exceeded in the focus indicator, so it might as well be exceeded up here. And I, I do think her HCAM hangouts yes. had greater attendance than any program HCAM has ever hosted last summer in August. Oh my word. We were all just waiting for the next one. <laughs> Yeah, right. and nothing really further to add. It was a, an important year for communication with the community and other, other boards and officials, and I agree. Okay. All right, so the next one on the rubric here is the District Improvement Goal 1, um, and this is one, Joe, you started talking about initially. In response to COVID-19, create a strategic plan to be submitted to DESE and shared with the community, the primary focus of which will be to improve access and achievement for all students based on where the district was last spring. So, so, so Joe, I, you were talking, so should, uh, take it away. <laughs> yeah. That's where my comments go, okay. Yeah, I think it was met. Um, I think it's a very specific uh, goal, so it's easy to measure and say that it was met. Uh, the it, it, I don't consider it a, a, a overly ambitious goal. It was um, to improve access over last spring when everyone was sent home and had a lot of complaints with the remote experience initially March, April last spring. So I think we uh, achieved that. Uh, we submitted the plan and the focus of that plan was to improve access over last spring. So whatever complaints people have about the fall and until now, um, it'd be hard to say we didn't have a plan that improved access over last spring. Okay. Anyone else? I um I thought she exceeded here. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but creating a strategic plan to be submitted to DESE, which we did at the end of the summer. And we were one of the very few districts in the state in the country who brought in the IEP students five days a week, which to me seems extraordinary. I and put exceeded as well, but because she did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> so she met this goal two times in this year. If you really think about it, she met the goal last summer, but then when we had to come back full time, you know, there was yet another committee, yet another set of curriculums, yet another like organizational and logistical nightmare that had to happen. And it happened again and it worked, right? And so I felt like she actually met the goal twice in one year, which to me moved it to exceeded. Good point. An excellent point. I also was thinking of the, not just the kids that were brought in that were on IEPs, but as the year went along, I know there were kids who were, had not been initially considered who were invited in for the five day a week because it was clear that the hybrid was not working for them. So that was my. And I, I could be swayed. I mean, I, I was, again, in between the two because, I like Joe, I think based on the way the goal was written, it was met. It was definitely met twice. Um, I think we did, and I did cite in my, in my um, language in several places, the fact that we were open for ESY, which was compl a complete rarity in the state. It was unbelievable. And the fact that we open, you know, we were open for hybrid, which, you know, not a lot of districts didn't and didn't do from the beginning of the year. Um, and the fact that we got all our kids back, um, not all districts have done that either. Um, and the high school is not compelled to go back until the 17th. 
again, that's sort of a different plan. It's not exactly how the goal was written, so it was a little bit, um, it was hard for me to figure out, is it by the goal or is it just by the observation of the whole year? So um, I can be persuaded on this one. I was halfway there anyway. If I can just compliment the teachers on this one, I would like to do that. Yes. Because one of the things that I will say our teachers were asked to do is to maximize their instructional time mm -hmm. and to really think about what kids would be doing on their, their off day where the teacher wouldn't have some kind of intervention. So I will say that I thought our teachers did a very nice job of, even though they had only half their class, really hammering away at the curriculum on the days when their kids were in front of them. So a shout out to the faculty. It's a, it's a nice shout out, um, and, and I agree. Um, this, this goal is about the superintendent and the report, though, and I don't want it to be interpreted as a commentary on the teachers, uh, negatively Correct. or positively. It's, right. Yeah. The, the only one thing that, that uh, where I would say we, we didn't necessarily improve access for all, because the word all is in there, is uh, there were complaints on uh, quarantine students, close contacts who are at home, who probably had less access to the yeah. curriculum. Some, right, maybe not all, but some, uh, than they had last spring. Yeah. yeah, I know it was such a complicated year because I thought about that. I also thought about the fact that I know there are other districts that just outsource the curriculum for remote kids. They just picked a third party, which is easy oh. and sort of clean. But I know Dr. Kavanaugh fought really hard to keep as many kids in front of Hopkinton teachers as we could, which um, I think was huge. And it, we did that at great expense and great effort to support you know, our teachers and our students. So you know, that's where I was in the exceeded camp. I'm, I'm terrible at these things. <laughs> I, yeah. So um, if I can just say where the teacher part comes in is in the modern teacher course, because that's what that was designed to do, okay. to help teachers better understand kind of the rhythm of. Okay, so this is another one where we're leaning exceeded, but we have some, we're gonna, we're gonna go through all these one more time at the end. So we're leaning, I think three of us are exceeded. I'm leaning exceeded now. Um, Joe makes a compelling case for Matt. I mean, I think I think I can hear it all, but let's, let's go through and cycle back after. District Improvement Goal 2 is move the district toward greater proficiency in diversity, equity, inclusion, social justice, and anti-racism. I will embark upon a multi-pronged plan to grow staff repertoires, explore the curriculum, address students' needs, and align our work with a community effort that might be an appropriate connection. And that is Goal 2, and where did we fall? This was a really hard one, especially in light of recent events. And I don't think I would feel good going higher than mm. <laughs> this is really hard. It is. So because I we have so much work, all of us, to do. Yeah. So I picked Matt because I underlined greater proficiency. We didn't say that we would get to the end goal. We said that this year we would get better. And I think what I saw in the evidence was we got better, right? We may not be at the end point, but, but that's what I did. I looked through that goal very carefully because I was like you, and then I saw greater proficiency and I underlined it and I said, this is what I'm measuring and if I'm measuring greater proficiency, yes, yeah. we, we are definitely at greater proficiency um, based on all the evidence I saw. So that's why I picked Matt. So in this goal, I had exceeded even aside, from, I mean, the goal isn't are we done because we're clearly not done. I mean, we have, I mean we're, we're barely getting started, but I, based on what was um, put before us in the goal, and the work that was done and the way in which the, our superintendent specifically has been the champion of this work. I mean, if it weren't for Dr. Kavanaugh, this work wouldn't get done. And because of Dr. Kavanaugh, not only 
are people like deeply engaged with the work, they're conversant, they've been um, self-reflective on where they are themselves in terms of um, ABAR work and, and DEI, they're looking at their curricula. Um, I think a lot of progress was made on this this year, and so, um, you know, we also saw evidence of Dr. Kavanaugh's um, cultural proficiency course, which I believe you took with other administrators, or no? Was it just um, the our new director of equity and access ran the course okay. um, with a couple of other people in the district, so it was open to administrators and teachers, okay. and so uh, you know, I enrolled along with. And there may have been over 40 people who took the course. And, you know, I appreciate um, amidst all the, you know, we forget that for nine months we were consumed by COVID mm -hmm. discussion, but all the while the book studies continued, the connection with the BIPOC um, community, the students who are sharing their experiences continued. So I value that it would be so easy to have put this on the shelf. And even though we clearly are just barely getting started, I felt like it, to me, I felt like Dr. Kavanaugh exceeded what was planned for the year. So I had put um, met initially in this. I, I am I agree with a lot of what you said, and I think that Dr. Kavanaugh um, personally moved the needle in the what has been done at that level. I, I think I also feel a little bit of what Meg has said is that I think not just at that level, but as a community and as the trickle down from the rest of kind of the, the next level down still needs to move further. So I think Dr. Cavanaugh has met that piece of the goal, but I think the work continues. So I, yeah, absolutely. I, I, and I think it, um, there's this, I think it was mentioned in Dr. Cavanaugh's evidence that not, you know, we haven't fully done the curriculum interrogation. Like there was a, yeah. in not, there were some pieces that were not done fully. Well, and the evidence was really outstanding in, in terms of things. Some of the piece that we were reading earlier today, I, I thought was really from your, that was your homework from that course. Really um, excellent high level work. Uh, and I, I look forward to, I think, more of, and more of that kind of from a larger chunk of our community and but also to point out that this has been while we're doing this this year this has been a goal that Dr. Kavanaugh has been working away at for through the three years that you've been doing this so and I, I agree with what both of you have said and I, I think Dr. Kavanaugh as ever has gone above and beyond but then I look at address students needs and align our work with a community effort that might be an appropriate connection. And I think of all of the dissonance recently, which is in no way a single person's fault, but we really have a real rupture and fracture here. Um, I like that there is work on making the workforce more diverse, but it's not diverse enough yet. It's still, pretty white, um, so we, we have more to do for sure. Yeah, I think I think the reason why I didn't go higher than that is um, the same concern I think I've voiced at meetings before, which is while we're doing all this education, the kids are still in the schools and the schools are still progressing year to year. And, you know, if, if our children of color, all LGBTQ students don't have the right support mechanisms around them, even while teachers are learning, then, you know, the, the, it's the dissonance that she's talking about. The kids need to be consistently getting support and we need to be hearing about that. Like, what are the things that are being done to ensure that, you know, our children of color have a counselor in place that knows, it, you know, how to deal with their issues or LGBT, you know, like what, what is the structure around that while all this great education for the teachers and administrators and stuff is going on? So I think that that is also part of the reason why I hit on that because, I, you know, I, I think the Grant Hightower stuff is amazing. Yeah. The eighth and ninth grade stuff is oh, definitely yeah. a step. And the vision stuff. I mean, there's so much oh, amazing yeah. stuff here. Yeah. We're, we're still on the way. Yep. So um, just looking at the way the goal is written and the measurements that we set, right? Yeah. 
uh, there are measurements we didn't set that maybe weren't met, but the measurements we set and the goal we set is, is definitely met. And to get to exceeded, I can't count the number of times that in school committee meetings we heard about these issues, right, from Dr. Kavanaugh. And in uh, at least a blog post or, or more than one. Uh, so um, it, I see all the evidence here. I think it's at least met, and there's probably a case to be made for exceeded. But I think on all of these, Amanda, um, we, we won't necessarily come to agreement on exceed or, or met, but you can take the majority, maybe, as long as you kind of notate what some of the comments were above or below, you yeah. know. Yeah. I think that would make a nice consolidated report that way. But I agree there's more to do, but our goal said move the district toward greater proficiency. And then we had specific things to do, most of which appear to be done, plus some. And I think, you know, reading it, I think, you know, be, because of the address students' needs part, I mean, I think we were, we are, obviously, um, we have some specific work to do there. It wasn't exactly called out in the details, but you could convince me to go with Met on this one. I mean, I think it's tricky because I think later in one of the, maybe it was the indicator, I can't remember what it was, but we'll get to it. I was identifying what I'm hoping we're gonna do next year. And I'm, I'm eager to get more engaged with the students on this. And you know, I think there's, there's been a lot of intense work in the last three years to start from zero and build a base. And I think we're, we're, re we're ready to go. You know, we got to get fast, you know, move faster, but we didn't write that in this goal. But I do, I do understand your point, so if we want to go with MET, I will mark that. And the last goal, uh, we made a two-year goal uh, because the pandemic interrupted our ability to make progress when we didn't do the capital uh, budgeting. Our, our capital projects weren't brought forward last year, so we couldn't do the campus planning study. So we had agreed to make that a two-year goal. Um, for the purposes of this year, I feel like a lot of progress was made in spite of the fact that we didn't do the campus planning study, so we didn't have the community forums. We didn't do the other things that were identified, which we'll do next year. Um, but I think I put significant progress. I think that's what I, I put to, too, because I, I mean, I guess I could be persuaded, about, but I didn't know if that was bad to put significant progress or not. Like once again, that, that weird step between that and the level below, like I wasn't sure what that meant, but I agree with you, Amanda. I mean, we did make significant progress. We figured out the cost over the next 10 years. We um, got the Elmwood School stuff started. Uh, the projections seem to be right on track. You know, we we have that study coming up. So it just, it felt like we definitely moved the needle quite a bit, right. even if we, we didn't meet the goal and we've, you know, said that it'll go for two years. So we secured the votes at town meeting for right. the feasibility money and That's the right. study. Yeah. I actually, I put this as met because I, it, the way I was looking at it was as a two-year goal. Yeah. And yeah. I was thinking okay. uh, part, the, the first year of this was met and that it would be evaluated in the second year as well. Okay. And kind of looking back at the presentations that Dr. Kavanaugh has made on this that ultimately, you know, helped us to get the, our pieces passed at town meeting. Yeah, that I, I agree. That I wasn't sure. We've never had a two-year goal. No, we haven't, but that was kind of how it, yeah. But I think absolutely we're well on track. We're ahead of on track. That's right. And in the middle of the pandemic, we scored this SOI yeah. acceptance, which is pretty great. Yeah. So. We had architectural presentations and Susan's updates on uh, yeah. you know, right. building maintenance plan. And, uh, I hadn't met. I think we achieved our, so we, we met. I mean, in that regard, we exceeded half of it. Like, you know, if it's a two-year goal, we're well ahead of schedule. But, I mean, we can just put Matt if that's... Yeah, I, I'm fine with Matt. Like I said, I, this was one of those things where I didn't know, compared to the workforce, what counts really badly here, right? So in the workforce, if I have a two-year goal and I say significant progress in year one, that's, you know, a positive. But if it's looked down on, then I want it to be met because we did make really good progress and it shouldn't be counted against. Right, there should be nothing. It's, it's all good and this right. progress exactly. is excellent. Yeah. 
Do you have any insight into how two-year goals are handled, just generally? So typically with a two-year goal, you'll keep the same goal but update where you are as you go into the following year. And so if you're, if you're on schedule, are you generally a met? Or if you're ahead of schedule, do you ever get exceeded in the first year when you haven't actually met the whole goal? You know what I mean? I do. Um, I think significant progress met, whatever you think is appropriate, either one of those things would be OK. okay. I hear met from the com committee. Mm -hmm. All right, so before we move off goals, um, we now, so what I have is uh, for the um, first goal, we were a little bit undecided. For the second, the goal number three, which was professional practice, we were exceeded. District improvement goal on COVID, we were a little undecided. And then on DEI work and on the two year goal, we are met. So I still, I still feel like goal, the COVID goal, I would still, I would say exceeded at this point. That's goal, district improvement, goal one. We were between the two. I had said exceeded on that. So you and I were exceeded, then there were a couple of. Yeah. I was exceeded as well. It was two. Okay, yeah. so that's an exceeded. So I'm fine with any word you want to use, as long as in the commentary you can say comments were made regarding the all, not, not all. There was some difficulty addressing the curriculum access for quarantining and close contact students. So in the past, what we've done is taken all the comments that we send to Amanda or to, to whoever's doing it, uh, we've taken those and tried to, to make a, a narrative that includes all the voices. Yes. So that that's that would be wonderful. wherever we fall yeah. that we don't lose the, right. would that be an accurate representation? That's accurate. Of, yeah. Yes, it is. So we just send you our end cycle evaluation sheets, right? Yes. Yep. yep. Just, you send this, you know, to me. Yep. And so the last one, the student learning goal, back to Fontes and Pinnell and the reading goals. Um, were we two and two? I was met. Which number is I this? Was, that's the first one, number, one? number uh, goal number four, the student learning goal. Well, this is the one I was on the fence with. I was closer to met. You I were closer, closer to exceeded. exceeded. But I also don't want to hold the whole process up. No. So, and, but, and Joe was, so we had, oh, Leah was exceeded, right? Yep. And then Meg and Joe were both met. You said you were leaning towards met, met. plus? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, I, I, I'm fine with going with met on that. It, that feels like a. Okay. Okay. Two met, two exceeded, and one in process. Oh, well, I'll, say, I'll say Matt. Are you looking for mine? Or yeah. Who's, yeah, Matt. Okay. All right. So going to the indicators. Okay, so as you know, there are four standards. And just to remind anyone who's watching this, we have to evaluate Dr. Kavanaugh on all four standards, but we don't have to cover every single indicator. So we've gone to this new model of picking a sampling of focus indicators across each standard. And so for the first one, we have instructional leadership is the standard. And the uh, focus indicator that we're looking at is 1A, curriculum, ensures that all instructional staff uh, design effective and rigorous standards-based units of instruction consisting of well-structured lessons with measurable outcomes. And so we're just doing A and B for one, right? Yeah. And you're right. And the other indicator we're looking at is one B instruction. Under here, okay, so for curriculum, for 1A, I had, I'm really bad with these check minuses, check pluses. I had check minus on exceeds. <laughs> so exceeds minus, I guess, is what I had. And what I was thinking was, um, I cited the uh, degree to which Dr. Kavanaugh fought to have Hopkinton students in front of Hopkinton teachers this year which I think was really important for kids. Um, let's see. And the 
the initial read on the performance of our students is excellent in reading for K to six. We don't have the final reading scores yet. Um, math seems to be on track. Um, I cited the high needs learners that were brought into school, both the ones in IEPs and as Nancy said, the ones who were struggling and were, we were able to work with the teachers to identify those students. So I think I, most of that, I, well, somewhere between curriculum and instruction, I, I felt like she did a good job on that. But where'd you guys fall? I was unexceeded as well. I um, felt like this year, out of any year, has caused so many pivots in instruction, so many changes, and yet at the end of the year, like you said, with the STAR testing, minimal, like minimal lag from when the stu where the students should be. The the kids have kind of quickly picked up things and are moving at the right pace again. Like with every piece of turmoil that happened this year, the kids are pretty much back on track. And that's, to me, that's a huge achievement. And then on top of that, we rolled out this new instructional curriculum for reading. Um, I, I just think it, it was such a rough year and we did so well. Um, that's a lot on Dr. Kavanaugh and her leadership. So I put exceeded as well. Are, we, are you checking 1A? We're still which, on 1A. Which, one one can we sorry. read, which goal are we looking at? I'm sorry, we're I got on a indicator. Lost. We're under instructional leadership and okay. we're talking about indicators 1A and 1B, but 1A oh. first, curriculum. Okay, instructional leadership, okay. I had P for this one because last year I'm sure I gave an E and I still think she's just exceptional with curriculum. However, our star scores for middle school and high school reading weren't what the elementary school students were and the high needs learners really need a more differentiated curriculum in both middle school and high school. I fell in the middle on this, um, but kind of, and I actually I literally checked both boxes. <laughs> it, because I, I felt like on the one hand, my belief going into this year was that we're in the middle of a terrible pandemic. We've got kids going to school every other day, which, it, it, you know, to be honest, I wasn't sure that would make it past like Halloween, that we would end up being remote. And I had expected that kids would lose much more learning than they, what appears to be so when we look at the evidence that we have before us now. So that, in that regard, I, but I do also feel like this has been an unusual year and that it kind of looking at the concretely, it's the COVID piece did take something away, um, but it's also, it, it, the, the way it's written does not take that into account. So I fell right kind of in the middle on that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna read exemplary and proficient, the definition. So um, proficient for curriculum is monitors and assesses progress across all schools and content areas to ensure that all instructional staff implement effective and rigorous standards-based units of instruction consistent with well-structured lessons with measurable outcomes. That's proficient. Exemplary empowers administrators to ensure all instructional staff collaboratively plan, adapt as needed, and implement standards-based units comprised of well-structured lessons aligned to state standards and local curricula, continually monitors and assesses progress, and provides additional supports as needed, models this practice for others. And so one, you're kind of keeping track of the progress and ensuring that there are there's rigor and standards-based instruction, which I think we do very well on a regular basis. But I liked, too, that this year um, the principals really had a lot of, they were empowered to figure out in their buildings how best to navigate this um, and get learning to their kids. And it looked different in different schools. And I like the empowers part, which I think reflects um, a lot of team building that's happened over three years with, you know, within the administration and that confidence. Um, I still, you know, I think we have standards-based 
units of well-structured lessons. I also appreciated that I, I know there was conversation about time on learning, mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate that we think of the nuance there as well. So just because you're sitting in front of a Zoom call doesn't mean you're effectively learning, or just because you're in a classroom doesn't mean you're engaged with a teacher. So there's a lot of nuance to how learning is delivered, and I think I like that regardless of how it might look on paper, I always felt like our administration under Carol was, was focused on delivering the education. So I don't know, but that's kind of, that was me. That's why I, I felt exceeded, or exemplary, I should say. So, and I would agree that the quality versus the quantity in, in that piece is a, a big, to me, it, when we got kind of a lot of criticism over the number of minutes and times of the time of learning, mm -hmm. I was concerned about the quality over the quantity, but I still even like looking at these two things. It still leaves me kind of on the fence there yeah. between the between proficient and exemplary. Yeah, I, I would have a hard time arguing this year, and it's okay to cite um, external factors that came into play. I'd have a hard time saying it was exemplary this year. Uh, we had lots of parents of young students saying that um, there was no. Uh, it, it, on the hybrid at home days, it was very difficult, especially for kindergartners, first graders, second, younger students, right. to access the curriculum. And it wasn't until later in the year that we started requiring even an hour of minimum Zoom time. There was not, uh, as in your proficient standard even, definition, something about um, having uniform standards. And you mentioned each principal had the leeway within their school but we saw examples from many families that there was inconsistency within schools. So it would be hard to argue even for parts of proficient, I think. So I would just not feel comfortable with the uh, exemplary, you know. I, I could be persuaded that there were some areas of proficiency, but I think the big external factor to talk about is it was an off year. We did our best but it w was not exemplary. And I, I absolutely agree. I think that especially for our kids on those asynchronous days, I'm not sure that the quality of the instruction <laughs> was great. You know, even IEP students who were here on asynchronous days were put in resource rooms without the intimate guidance a lot of the time of learning specialists. So I can't say that that's anything more than proficient. So, Which is fine. Proficient yeah. is good. So the the piece in exemplary that catches my attention is adapt as needed. This was a year of adapting as needed. This was a year where, you know, yeah. there are kids who are having trouble with remote who don't have IEPs, as we said, and suddenly they're pulled into school for five days a week, even though that's not a requirement. We have, you know, children who are now required to have an hour during the off days and you know the teachers pivoted within a week under Dr. Kavanaugh's uh, guidance. We had three different curriculums starting the school year and we had two different forms of instruct three really uh, live streaming remote and hybrid for the fall. So in terms of adapt as needed, which is not part of proficient, it's part of exemplary. Like, I, I can't imagine how that has not been met. Okay, you're the tiebreaker, so Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the tiebreaker is a big, a big pressure to have. I, you know, I think the one thing that's jumping out at me is I want everybody to feel comfortable with what we, how we leave that yeah. and that it does seem like some people have stronger feelings on that, certainly, than I do. It is all in the narrative, too. I think right. you're right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to mark it as proficient for now. We're going to circle back at the end. OK, how do we feel about instruction? Ensure us that practices in all settings reflect high expectations, regardless of content and quality of effort and work, and engage all students and are personalized to accommodate diverse learning styles, needs, interests, and levels of readiness. So this is where 
where in the first one I put exemplary, on this one I put proficient. Mm -hmm. So this is where I picked up what you guys were talking about and reflected it in my rankings. But um, what did you all do? Proficient. I, I would just be repeating what I just said. So. I mean, they're not the same. They're two different yeah. indicators. So, you know, well, sorry, this one says for instruction, um, Proficient monitors and supports principals and instructional staff through observations and feedback to ensure instructional practices in all settings reflect high expectations regarding content and quality of effort and work, engage all students, and are personalized to accommodate diverse learning styles, needs, interests, and levels of readiness. Exemplary says, sets high expectations for the content and quality of instruction and empowers all administrators to do the same such that instructional practices throughout the district are engaging, inclusive, and personalized to accommodate diverse learning needs of all students, stays informed of new evidence-based instructional practices, and provides resources and supports to implement them as needed, monitors principals and instructional staff in support of those practices through observations and feedback. See, I hopped the opposite way. I put that as exemplary. And maybe I'm reading. But, but I, it could yeah, be. Different. Highlight the differences that maybe kind of I was reading it a little bit differently than that. Could you? I, I'm curious to hear how. What, can you give me some examples of exemplary then? So that, that I felt like the expectations were set high. I felt like what was coming from Dr. Kavanaugh, in like that to me, when you read it, I was looking at the where it talks about stays informed of new evidence based instructional practices. There were a lot of talks about some of the reading pieces that were being done talks about, you know, talking and looking at the evidence uh, in terms of all of the different targeted interventions in terms of it, looking at including some of our higher needs kids in different ways, looking at it, it was adapting along the way. So I did what Amanda did and I flipped. <laughs> The same thing. So for me, the curriculum, at, so as a, as a curriculum, yeah. there was a lot of adaptation and a lot of amazing work done. For instruction, you know, it, we were in a pandemic. We tried our best. There's only so much we can do. And so I was more on the proficient end, though I did put the two X's. <laughs> but I was more on the proficient end on this because of those reasons. The implementation of the instruction was very difficult, mm -hmm. but I think the creation of the curriculum was amazing. Right. Like the the work that was put into the curriculum. So yeah, I would agree. There, I, there's again external factors, right? Uh, yeah. Despite best efforts, it, I, I exemplary would be like if we had successfully had live streaming on at home days for all students or something like that. That would be exemplary in my mind. The way you read the definition of, of exemplary. So without that or other examples like it, I would say proficient. And we can cite the external yep. factors. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. But I, I, I wouldn't be able to look some parents in the eye and say we were exemplary. <laughs> That's all in the delivery. And again, it's, it's, it's speaking to the goal as written. And it's not to say, it, I will always say, teachers worked twice as hard this year. But yeah. it's the model that we set up. No, and I, I don't, I, like I said, I don't, I agree. I'm, Leah said much more articulately what I was thinking too, is that I thought that we were somewhat limited into how effectively we could, could do a session. We did a really good job. It wasn't perfect, maybe live streaming every day, maybe you know, bringing the quarantine students a little bit better um, would have helped. But so for, for this, I was on proficient. I still feel hesitant about the curriculum piece being proficient, because um, I agree with what Leah said. I thought that we handled the curriculum piece really well, but given the constraints. But we'll come back. I got it. We'll circle back. That brings us to, so that would mean that for instructional leadership for this year, overall, it would be a proficient. Okay. And then the next standard is management and operations. 
And in this, we have not one, not two, but three indicators. So we have environment, law, ethics, and policies, and fiscal systems. Starting with environment, which is uh, indicator 2A, develops and executes effective plans, procedures, routines, and operational systems to address a full range of safety, health, emotional, and social needs. This one was really hard for me because I wasn't sure if I needed to look at the goal that it was tied to or to look at it on its own. So if I look at it as based on the goal it was tied to, which I can't remember if it was goal three or five, I have it written down here, then I think it's proficient. If I look at it on its own and we're talking just, you know, environment, oh my God, the amount of cleaning and the amount of rearrangement of the, the area to make it safe for children, the trying to find any way to allow them to have some social contact in the middle of this pandemic, like then it moves up for me. So if it's if it's tied to the goal, then I'm in proficient, but if it's just standalone, then I feel like of anything, <laughs> this was the exceptional goal because it was crazy. I believe here we're looking at the indicator it does cross-reference, the goal does cross-reference a bunch of indicators, but I think we're just looking at the indicator. Is that as you would? That was my understanding of it, but as Leah was saying that, I was thinking, well, maybe I looked at this wrong. No, I think here we're doing the indicators. I think the point of the cross-referencing, and Dr. Kavanaugh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the goal is, the goals and the indicators support the district strategic plan and support um, each other so that we have, we're not like sort of doing things piecemeal, but we have a consistency and a coherence to what we're doing. Right. Yes, the notion of being able to tie some of these together and then align them with the strategic plan is to say that the district is moving. Right. And all of the parts work together. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe the interrelation might inform the overall rating at the top that we haven't done yet. We can talk more about how well we supported um, but for here, I think I'd say just stick to the indicator. I had exceeded for this one for environment. So did I. I did it as well um, in thinking back to the empowering piece of the administrators, how each school did have, uh, have to, the administrators were empowered to figure out some of those dismissal procedures, some of the passing in the hallway and different things like that. Um, but also the school and district buildings have been amazing this year just relative to I think other districts what they've been able to do and just I'm thinking back to before the schools opened how you you were featured on now I can't remember what channel it was but for some of the innovative things that were done to ensure um, safe buildings right and and with a skeleton crew right we have such a small administration but the execution of events were amazing, so. Yeah, I thought it was exemplary the way that the physical environment was managed and uh, attended to, but while also a high level of attention to the social, emotional needs of the students, I think yeah. both of those are part of this, right? So, uh, for example, um, with all the mitigations in place, uh, school could appear it could have been made a very scary place, a very mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you, you must walk this way and do this and get in this line. But for example, at Elmwood School, they always have those greeters out front and making it a personal experience, even with the masks and uh, examples from other schools as well. So I think that uh, the physical adaptations were done in a way that respected the humanity of the students as, as it's well in said. many cases, as much as possible. Very well said. We're in violent agreement. All right, excellent. So let's I think that's the only one we've all been <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to 2D. Uh, law, ethics, and policies understands and complies with state and federal laws and mandates, school committee policies, collective bargaining agreements, and ethical guidelines. And call the rubric. So for proficient, it understands and complies with state and federal laws and mandates, school committee policies, collective bargaining agreements and ethical guidelines, and provides resources and support to ensure district-wide compliance. 
Exemplary is provides the resources and support for all school personnel to understand and comply with state and federal laws and mandates, school committee policies, collective bargaining agreements, and ethical guidelines models this practice for others. I had exceeded. I thought that this was walking into a minefield. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and none of those mines went off. You know, we brought our kids back, and I think it, it was just very well done in an impossible situation. Mm -hmm. I think um, from discussions with other school committees recently, I think that I take for granted how engaged Dr. Kavanaugh is in our policy mm -hmm. um, because that is not the case in every district. And I think the awareness of our policy and the proactive efforts to um, either bring forth the um, new policy or m manage and maintain our existing policy is kind of exceptional in, in terms of um, what I just anecdotally heard peers do. And I think that we, as a school committee, are super spoiled because mm -hmm. otherwise it really is our policy um, and we don't have to pull for changes. We, we have a good uh, working relationship on policy, which I think is unusual That's and fine. I appreciate that. So I had proficient, but at the same time my comments were um, I'm sure neither teachers nor the superintendents have ever had to bargain so frequently with so much concern as they've had to in the past year. And of course, Dr. Kavanaugh works hard in our policy committee meetings. So if you all feel that it's exceeded, I think I can be talked that way. Um, but I, did, I just set the proficient as a sort of starting point. So. Yeah. Um, am I the only one who hasn't spoke yet on it? Or has, I, I haven't actually said what my oh, reading yeah. is, but no. go ahead. Okay. Um, I would say exemplary um, f uh, on the, you know, I, I can't count the number of times that Dr. Kavanaugh was way ahead of like Desi guidance or Bessie guidance or wherever it was coming from, ahead of when it was coming out, like, oh, we're expecting this. So I think that to your point of taking for granted, like we could always count on the superintendent for knowing what was coming and what it meant and what we'd have to do as a result. So that would be one example that pushes me to exemplary. Nancy? I, I rated this as exemplary uh, for a lot of the reasons that have already been said, but really uh, Dr. Kavanaugh is quick with this stuff off the top of her head. And even though we've been going through a lot of these policies for years now, um, some of them fade from my memory a little more quickly. So all of that, the, in the, the laws, the mandates, the, all of it, the, the ethics, I would rate very highly. So I would say exemplary. So go on exemplary. Yeah, I would agree with that. Fiscal systems, that's 2E. It develops a budget that supports the district's vision, mission, and goals, allocates and manages expenditures consistent with district and school level goals and available resources. I have to say exemplary on this one too. I mean, I'm I'm blown away every time I get the financial update, the level of detail, and um, and uh, knowledge of every nook and cranny of the budget, and strategies that we should use in times of uncertainty when revenue situation was uncertain. We had financial strategies recommended to us on how to how to how, what we could do in the meantime, and then when we have more visibility, to then have a Plan B. <laughs> so, I think I think um, I agree, and I, I think also you know having um, her having Jen who does all the grant work and gives us so much um, to the district. And it, when I look at the per student cost, and I look at how carefully our money is managed and how far it goes considering you know where our district is it, yeah there's an, it's nothing short of exemplary it's perfect i yep. i went exemplary with this i i think that the budgeting and the fiscal systems are a real strength and i have appreciated every year that you've brought a budget forward how transparent it's been how you have given the same presentation to so many times to so many groups that by the time we get to town meeting it we have 
put the understanding out there in a way that does not lead to, um, or has not, knock on wood, led to controversy on town meeting floor. And I think it was two years in a row we didn't even get any questions on the budget. That's right. Because I, and, and I think that is in large part not just due to the cold on Saturday morning, yeah. but um, mm -hmm. due to how well you have presented the budget at town meeting and a billion times before that. I think that there's such an, a level of trust from the community in your ability to handle our fiscal systems now. Because I remember a few years ago where words were cast about, which were not entirely trusting, <laughs> of, of what school people were thinking. But you have been so clear in all of your explanations and your public presentations um, to every group that I, I just find incredibly impressive. I would highlight another point in the commentary would be that um, the, the alliance and leveraging expertise in other parts of town government is also another point of being exemplary. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. I mean, I think um, Dr. Kavanaugh has worked hard to make sure that we are well connected with um, the town, with town hall, with our town manager, with our town CFO, with the appropriations committee, um, and other committees like the growth study committee, other um, sort of areas of town where discussions are being had that are kind of tangentially linked to budget, but they help shape people's understanding of the issues. And every time you turn around, Dr. Kavanaugh is there to shed light on what is happening. And I think it really helps all different um, members of the community really understand and appreciate where the budget's coming from. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not just within the schools, it's definitely outside the schools as well. All right, so we are uh, exemplary for that, and for this standard, we have exemplary as the overall. We move on to standard three, family and community engagement. We have only one indicator, and it is the communication indicator. Uh, 3C, engages in regular two-way culturally proficient communication with families and community stakeholders about student learning and performance. That's 3C. I rated this as exemplary. I think communication is a, a real strength of Dr. Kavanaugh's. I think looking at what the indicator rubric talks about is um, multiple formats, and I would cite the blog, I would cite the regular communications that come out from the superintendent, and, I, and also all of the HCAM shows that were done uh, in the ways that it also, that, you know, she has been inviting to many people to, to anybody who has questions. I know she calls parents directly over the weekend and has conversations like that with people when I think a lot of people are not working. So. I think we take for granted those all those hangout hours. I mean, yeah. I don't think other superintendents are doing that. And it's a format that people, they can ask questions. They can, you know, because HKM hosts it that way. And so, you know, opening yourself up to those questions, dropping in on our office hours, again, one more meeting that, you know, superintendent is not required to be at, but um, coming to a few of our office hours to answer questions was huge. The public forum that we had on reopening that had record attendance, and those questions came firing rapid fire. Right, and, and taking on pieces that had, were a lot for us to manage ourselves, but were really kind of our pieces from our office hours. Also, I know that you make sure that the communications that are going out are going out in many languages to families for whom English is not their, um, the language spoken at home. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was, that was actually a question I had that I didn't know the answer to. And since I didn't do it until this morning because of what happened, I, I didn't end up sending the email yet. So I had it at proficient, but because of that culturally proficient communication, I was like, what does that really mean? Like how, you know, wh wh what does it mean to culturally proficiently communicate, right? There's another communication one further along where I was like exemplary for sure. This one, I had questions like that, whether, you know, there's emails in different languages sent out, like what, what does culturally proficient mean? And so that's why I had proficient instead of exemplary was, was that little piece, but Yes, we do make sure that any communication that goes to families who need that communication in another language, it's translated for them. And of course, you know, we always provide an interpreter for, you know, face-to-face -face meetings, which really haven't happened in the midst of a pandemic, but that would be typical 
you know, operating procedure is to make sure we get our translators and interpreters, you know, translations and interpreters for all families. Okay, thank you. Mm. Can I say something too about the communication indicator that says supports and empowers all administrators to engage in regular two-way culturally responsive communications with families? I feel like Dr. Kavanaugh embodies a, a tact and a respect for others in her communications, and she's a very good listener. And she models that for the principals and the upper administration, who are all excellent communicators themselves. But I have noticed a trickle-down effect over the past few years um, that I can trust the principals to greet everyone with equanimity and calm and courage and honesty. And I think, in part, it's because we have this exemplary communicator whose eyeballs never spin <laughs> in conversation, right? That's hard, especially in the past year. I mean, the, the sense of decorum, usually I, I don't use decorum in a complimentary way, but I think she possesses it to a very enviable degree in her interactions with others, which really expresses respect for other people's thinking. Exemplary. Yeah, well said. I would agree exemplary for all those reasons and uh, the others cited regarding all the, um, if we were to have a question from a district that said, hey, how do you guys do communication? I would say we have had exemplary communication from our superintendent. We'll talk, tell you about the hangout hours and all the other forums that, that you mentioned. Great. I would also maybe just a shout out to Jen Suger who, you know, if we have a family that's struggling with enrollment or something like that, she is bringing people into the central office now, even in a pandemic and helping people through that process. So that's been really a lovely addition. Yeah. And I also think, um, especially at a time like this year, there were several times when there were some happenings that were a little outside of the purview maybe of the schools, like even at, like the rollout of the health track attestation app or mm -hmm. you know and the community looks to Dr. Kavanaugh for uh, leadership and instruction and, and, and communication and you deliver it really nicely and um, sometimes in collaboration with the Board of Health or other town partners but Dr. Kavanaugh is really a leader in communication so we all agree and that means the standard would uh, come down as exemplary. The fourth standard is professional culture, and we have two indicators. The first one is um, cultural proficiency, ensures that policies and practices enable staff members and students to interact effectively in a culturally diverse environment in which students' backgrounds, identities, strengths, and challenges are respected. That's indicator 4B. And where am I? Okay, so. Proficient in 4B is ensures the policies and practices enable staff members and students to interact effectively in a culturally diverse environment in which students' backgrounds and identities, strengths, and challenges are respected as evidenced by um, something, provision of guidance. Sorry, my Sufficient. Copy. Thank you, sufficient. Sufficient's blocked by the logo. Um, the exemplary is lead stakeholders to develop and implement culturally responsive policies and practices that acknowledge the diverse backgrounds, identities, strengths, and challenges of administrators, students, and staff, empowers administrators with time, oh, I didn't read that whole thing, I see, with time, resources, and supports to build culturally responsive learning environments and collaborates with community members to create a culture that affirms individual differences, models this practice for others. I cut proficient short, but that's okay. So how did we fall down in this one? Where did we land? She even had to decrease the font size to fit all the examples <laughs> of cultural proficiency in the past year. I then had to grow. Right. So this is one where I said proficient, and I'm very firmly in proficient, and it's not so much um, about the empowerment of staff, but it goes back to the students again. I, I feel that there are a lot of students who feel unheard, who are, you know, uh, are 
students of color or LGBTQ plus. And so the part where it says, in which students' backgrounds, identities, strengths, and challenges are respected. I think she's building that culture. I think it, it's being created. I think the work you're doing is admirable. But are we in a place where that's happening or already? I, I feel like it, it's all over the place. You know, there are teachers that are really good at it. There are places that are really good at it. And there's places where those students, like I said, are feeling unheard. And so that makes me feel like, while we have hit proficient, I don't know that we're at exemplary. I think exemplary is when students really do feel heard. Um, but that's, I mean, that's where I fall just based on, um, based on that sentence. What's hard for me in this indicator is that, you know, having witnessed sort of a three-year progression of commitment to this kind of work, um, where it says lead stakeholders mm -hmm. in our town almost. I mean, I think Dr. Kavanaugh is one of our, our leading leaders. You know, I think she's really pushing people beyond their comfort zone, pushing the... I appreciate the leadership. I, I agree that we are way short of, like, you know, calling it perfect or even good, um, maybe. But where the exemplary talks about that leading the stakeholders, it's not sitting back and watching what the stakeholders are doing. It's actually bringing this into the conversation, making it a priority, and bringing people together to engage in this work, you know, year after year after year. So. You know, I appreciate that part. Um, I do also appreciate that the students are um, not enough in the equation yet, in some cases. So we have a lot more conversation to have, and we have to bring the students and listen to the students more. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, based on the way the indicator is written, again, this none of this says we. We use these same indicators every year. So um, next year and five years from now and 10 years from now, we're still going to be looking at communications. And, and so it's not that you finish the work, but that you're doing the work. And at what level are you doing it for the year that is being evaluated? So I don't know. I guess I'm leaning in the uh, exemplary box. That was how I read, um, I, although I certainly hear, Leah, what you're saying, I, it, and have concerns about where our students are as well. The way I read the exemplary was fit, um, and, and I do think we have a lot of work as a district, as a you know, town, all of us, to continue on this. But I think that the leading the stakeholders to um, along this path is work that's being done. You know, my impulse was exemplary too. I thought this was different from goal two. Um, but I really am troubled by the wording. Um, on the sheet it says, ensures that policies and practices enable staff members and students to interact effectively in a culturally diverse environment. We're not in a culturally diverse environment. We're not. I mean, our town is very homogenous. Our, our schools are still pretty homogenous, even though we do have a 20% Southeast Asian population. And so, no, we don't have a culturally diverse environment. We don't. Is the complaint about the way the goal is worded? Or because how can you operate? How, in how can you answer it? Because we we are not in a diverse environment. We have a big monoculture still. So, I think she's doing a great job. But, I mean, we have mostly white faculty, teachers, and students who are more diverse than the staff. So. Diversity is not only race, right? Pardon? 
diversity is not only race, right? I mean, there's, there's other No, diversity. it's not, but embodied diversity is. I wonder what we meant in that, the way, when you, can you read that again? Because I wonder what we meant when we set it that way as a goal. It says. To, to, to interact in a culturally diverse community. Why would we? To be fair, we didn't write this. This is this is written by Desi. Indicators are defined by Desi, and the rubric is defined by Desi. So well, we I'll, don't write. I'll bring it up with Desi then. We have to take it up with Desi. Yeah, we don't write this. This is given to us, and all superintendents have to be. I, but I, I can't imagine that they're saying that you must create a population different than you have, right? It must be to respect whatever level of diversity you have to respect that. The other question I had is, um, does, the, does the indicator, uh, I, I would have to agree with Leah, I love that the comment you brought up earlier, I think it was in the fall, uh, Leah, when we talked about this. And you were like, this is all great, all this policy and educating staff, and that's gonna help maybe in the long run, but we've got kids who, who need attention today. <laughs> and I, I can't agree more with that. I wonder, though, if the goal or the, the indicator includes that. I mean, again, maybe we bring it up with Desi to make sure they make that stronger, that we need evidence that the students feel that it's being met. Or is the indicator all about the administration kind of doing certain things? Did you want to comment? You looked like you were ready to comment. No, I was actually just thinking about Meg's diversity comment. Um, I think what's interesting is if you looked at you know, the, the percentage of white students at the high school versus the percentage of white students at Marathon, yeah. it's very different. Yeah. So right now Marathon is under 60% white. Like it will be very soon that you know it's they've worked their way to you know majority minority in that school right. building. But, um, but our staff is still so different. You know that there's some imbalances there that we. We there haven't. Is. I'm not saying that the ultimate goal is this perfect heterogeneity in every community because then you would have a monotonous world <laughs> if every community is the same. Um, you know, I, I just think we haven't thought long enough about diversity um, and heterogeneity and sometimes the value of some more homogenous environments too for certain. Yes, reasons. I agree with that. I think I could have this for a 10-year goal. Yeah. Do you know, I mean, that's, that's, I think, the way this kind of work goes, because you're changing the mindsets of, of people. And that's in, in a place where you have 500 adults and 4,000 kids, you know, it takes a very long time, I think, to continue to work on that. But I don't think you ever arrive at a place where you're done. That's right. But I think that's where this is an indicator and not a goal. So every year, every year, the superintendent has to be accountable to these four standards. And this standard is professional culture. And the indicator that we, one of the indicators we picked was this. And um, so I think in a year where there's proficiency, you're kind of keeping the motor running. I mean, whatever's happening in your environment, you're kind of monitoring it, you're making sure the policies are sound, but you're not leading the charge. Like, lead, to me, the way the indicator is written, in this particular year, Dr. Kavanaugh has invested a lot of money, a lot of money, yes, probably a lot of money, but a lot of time and effort in leading the charge with stakeholders who are um, on all probably points of the spectrum of readiness to have the had to do the work like you know it, we're, it's a community of individuals and bringing them together and leading this work forward this year I mean this this will continue to be an indicator in perpetuity until they change it so for this year when I read it it's is it is you are you kind of like keeping the motor running or are you enacting change leading you know bringing these conversations forward? that's why I, I end up an exemplary in the environment that we're in, I feel like we could have seen all sorts of different behavior from the superintendent, and our superintendent is leading. Yeah, I, I, would, I would add on, on that note, um, there were national level incidents that happened over the past year where the first I heard of it was from the superintendent. The first public figure to speak out was our superintendent on some of those issues, and that's, that's bold, and I, I, I respect that. 
Yeah, I... So this is hard, because Dr. Kevin is right here, and I respect her work on this so, so much. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I read her evidence. It's amazing what she's done this year. I read, it, it, like, this is a really hard one for me. Be, once again, because of that one piece. Like, it, it, I feel like everything else. But do you think you captured that piece in the goal, in our ranking of the goal, where that goal was specific to, that was a goal that we wrote? Goal number two? Let me look at the, at the goal number two, where we said net for many of the reasons that you're talking yeah. about now, versus the indicator on cultural proficiency for like, looking at our superintendent, how cultural prof culturally proficient, how much leadership is she providing? I mean, does that help to think about it differently from the goal? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking leadership, by far, like she, the amount of work done this year was amazing. Mm -hmm. Right, like uh, I joining the Hopkinton Freedom Team, the the work with Doctor with Mr. Hightower, the work with Visions. The um, there was one particular thing that I wrote down here. I mean, having an equity and inclusion the um, director is unusual as well. And this falls under the rubric of professional culture, yeah. which we have to keep in mind. Right. So, I hear, and I am pulled by both of what you said, Meg, in terms of the larger piece of wanting down the line, well, right now, but we have to look ahead to where we're going, not where we, we are in this moment, but wanting to have a staff that reflects our students and so that they have people that they feel they, that look and share things in common with them, that that's just in terms of self-esteem, in terms of feeling valued, that those are important pieces. I also worry about how our students feel um, in just in light of all the things that we've seen this year. So I don't want to discount those when I'm looking at the pieces that I, I looked at. I don't. So where'd you end up? So, that, so I, I, I was, like you, I was feeling like, see, now I'm, I was thinking in my head, so I was feeling like I said it out loud, <laughs> uh, that I felt like the leadership piece on this was huge, the yeah. leadership to get involved with, to, that, with visions, to the freedom team, with the purchasing of, uh, it was a huge amount of money that was spent on texts that were just in, intended to help students see themselves in the text they were reading so that it was not just the same old, same old text that we've been reading where it's the, you know, the homogenous white protagonists and so on and so forth. Yeah. Are we going E on this one? Is majority going E? Or do we want to... I think it's a great discussion. You know, I think we should be careful to stick to the actual indicator language, you know? But there's a bigger discussion that it's a part of. I think that's what we're struggling with. Yeah. Because there's so much work that we know we have to do. Yeah. Um, to, yeah. And I think so raw for us just knowing people are hurting in our community. OK, so here's a question. And this is my first year doing this. So when we're looking at. Um, focused indicators are we looking at moving the needle or are we looking at the the sort of the language the wording of the actual indicator itself right so so for instance if i were to say 4b is a goal as a goal right then the wording i would be like well that's not really met per se so with the focus indicators, it's not a goal that we've written. It's something Desi gives us. And what are we judging it? Like, is it, is it how it changes from year to year? Is it like the, the sort of totality of what it is there on the paper? And we're just saying, did we hit that sentence or not? Like, I guess I'm, I'm trying to I mean, I think goals are, goals 
are targeting outcomes and deliverables and the so the five goals are goals and we kind of went through those and there's evidence and there's deliverables and you know all those all those things indicators to me are well the standards the standards are standards that every superintendent should be held accountable to so the four standards are the instructional leadership the you know um, business operations or whatever it's called uh, um, engagement with the families and community, which has a different name, and this one, professional culture. Every superintendent has to have proficiency in four standards. And this is an, one indicator of whether or not Dr. Kavanaugh is prof has proficiency in professional culture. So I think we're looking at this. Desi is defining proficiency based on this rubric. And so it's really looking at if this is a focus indicator, this year in the actions of the superintendent and the behaviors and the, the work of the superintendent, did we see this indicator at a proficient level or an exemplary level or a needs improvement or whatever? I mean, at which level did we see this year? Not how much more than last year, because again, these don't change. So like, these aren't like, 10 years from now, we don't need to do this one anymore. This is always one that they're accountable for. You know, it, it's, these are competencies, and have we seen this exhibited, and at which level? Would you agree, Nancy? Yeah. yeah. Do you mind just reading it again? It must of be course tough not. if people watch this recording to know what we're talking about. Well, fortunately, <laughs> the packet last week's um, meeting packet had all of the rubrics and everything for reference, and they're also on the um, MASC website and other websites. So I am looking at cultural proficiency, indicator 4B. Proficient is, ensures that policies and practices enable staff members and students to interact effectively in a culturally diverse environment in which students' backgrounds, identities, strengths, and challenges are respected as evidenced by the sufficient provision of guidance, supports, and resources to all schools to promote culturally responsive learning environments and school cultures that affirm individual differences of both students and staff. That's proficient. The um, exemplary is leads stakeholders to develop and implement culturally responsive policies and practices that acknowledge the diverse backgrounds, identities, strengths, and challenges of administrators, students, and staff, empowers administrators with time, resources, and supports to build culturally responsive learning environments and collaborates with community members to create a culture that affirms individual differences, models this practice for others. Yeah, I'm going to stick with exemplary, so Do you want to do the other two and then look at this one again? We have two more to go. Yeah, we'll come yeah, back. I think so. Okay. Um, and these all fall into professional culture. So the next one is a 4C communication. Demonstrate strong interpersonal written and verbal communication skills. Um, we've talked about communication a lot, but let's see. Proficient is demonstrate strong interpersonal written and verbal communication skills as evidenced by regular and informative outreach to staff, families, and community members and the school committee in a manner that advances the work of the district, regularly seeks and considers feedback and decision making. Exemplary is, utilizes and models strong context and audience specific interpersonal, written and verbal communication skills, actively seeks and incorporates feedback into decision making and in communicating rationale for the decisions to staff, family, community members and school committee. Exemplary. 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 Okay. I agree. <laughs> no debate required. <laughs> Give me. All right, last one, managing conflict, and then we can just kind of neaten up. Um, managing conflict is 4F, employs strategies for responding to disagreement and dissent, constructively resolving conflict, and building consensus throughout a district or school community. Okay, uh, indicator 4F. Proficient says, employs strategies for responding to disagreement and dissent, constructively resolving conflict, 
and building consensus throughout the district and school communities while maintaining a commitment to decisions that are in the best interest of all students. Exemplary says, models a variety of strategies for responding respectfully and effectively to disagreement and dissent and resolves conflicts in a constructive manner that all parties are able to move forward productively regularly strives to achieve consensus within the district and school communities while maintaining a commitment to decisions that are in the best interest of all students, empowers and supports administrators to use these approaches in their own leadership. So I mark this as proficient, um, and I, I do think that Dr. Kavanaugh responds with a lot of different strategies, but I also feel like this is there has been a lot of conflict this year, much of which is not under your control. Um, but I feel like proficient fell about where, in a, in, I don't mean just in the schools, I just mean there, it's been with everything, all the pressure cooking that this entire year seems to have brought, has brought a lot of conflict. So I put exemplary on this one. And what I wrote was, this has been the year for managing conflict. Yeah. There has been frustration in the community with so many diverse people wanting what is best for their kids each time the curriculum changed. There has been worry and frustration in the teacher community. And as I said before, all parties have had to negotiate more than ever. Um, I think this was a skill that, would need, that she rose to the challenge. She has worked more than anyone I know this year to resolve conflict as best she can. There were many times where had I been in her shoes, I would have spent weeks of sleepless nights trying to figure out how to handle what was happening around me. I cannot imagine the magnitude of her job this year when it comes to this particular um, focus indicator. So that's why I chose exemplary. I agree, I agree with everything you say. I, I put exemplary as well, um, because the conflicts were coming not just daily, but hourly. And she was able to retain her equilibrium and, and move past it with no hard feelings. I mean, I, I was just gobsmacked by the grace with which she managed this year. You know, somewhere between proficient and exemplary, I think, because um, I agree with everything uh, Leah and uh, Meg said. I, f I feel that that um, in certain cases there are there are strategies for managing conflict that may not have been considered. Uh, there might be a tendency to want to avoid conflict by uh, employing one strategy over another. Um, so I might be comfortable with a level of conflict that is different, um, but it reflects a use of strategies that may not be regularly employed that are available. And I had exemplary, I had exemplary with a little minus, but, but I think, um, you know, I was debating between putting that minus and not putting that minus. I, I agree this year has been like just full of conflict. One thing I really appreciate about Dr. Kavanaugh, and I've um, seen a lot of it this year firsthand, is that I don't actually see her usually walk away from a difficult situation. I mean, time and time again, she will face a difficult situation head on. And that is, um, that I think has been instrumental uh, in the three years that I've seen her work, but I mean, particularly this year, it's easy to try to look the other way, try to, you know, avoid, and I haven't actually seen avoidance um, and I am thankful for that because I think it's not easy and there have been many times when the easiest thing would have been to say put something out to community vote or you know just just go with the majority or whatever and Dr. Kavanaugh this year held her ground um, because of what was best for the students and I, I really appreciate all of that so I would be I'm, I have to say exemplary. And I'm totally comfortable with exemplary, but I, I will say the one thing that also did influence me was the fact that it, this being towards the end, I felt like I couldn't mark everything exemplary, <laughs> <laughs> Just, which is a bad reason to go with it, but I felt like... But I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard sometimes to look down and be like, okay, can I make everything exemplary? Um, I think one particular example for me is she was on HCAMP television presenting 
the next Wednesday, we were having school committee uh, office hours. There was no reason for her to be there. Right. We were going to deal with the you know discomfort of the community ourselves. Instead, she showed up to directly handle parent concerns, right? And then she's at the school committee the next day trying to answer the questions that were presented and trying to figure out how to navigate the, the concerns. So I, I think, I mean, just that in three days, right, it sort of exemplifies what this year has been like. I think she also taped an HCAM segment on the Tuesday before <laughs> that week. Right. <laughs> So if we look at professional culture, there were three indicators. We were tripping a little bit on cultural proficiency between proficient and exemplary. We said exemplary for communication, and we're a little bit between proficient and exemplary on managing conflict. So let me ask the committee, like overall, which if you had to give an overall rating, would you think the Dr. Kavanaugh would fall more in exemplary or more in proficient? Exemplary. 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 Yeah. Okay. So that's the case. Then I think of the two that and I would agree with that. I think that the two that we are betwixt and between, one of those should probably push to exemplary. Managing conflict. And one of them is, you know, they could all, you know, they can land where they want to land. But I think we want to get the overall right, and then maybe that's a way to think about the, the components. Yeah. Yeah. So you, Meg's suggesting that we move managing conflict to exemplary. And what's the other one? The other one was cultural proficiency. That's already exemplary. Right? Uh, no, it was we were. Oh. We were straddling. Oh, I see. Oh, I think we were mostly yeah. exemplary, but I, I think Leah had a strong argument um, for proficient. I mean, unless I misread it, were we in agreement on that? I think I, I was at proficient too for cultural proficiency. No fault of Dr. Kavanaugh's, but of the language. So were we a three-two split on that one. So I think we may have been a three-two split on that because of the language of the indicator. Is that what you said? Yeah. So three-two split would put us in exemplary. Again, a lot comes down to the narrative um, and managing conflict. Would we want them all to be exemplary? Would that reflect the right? So, if I can just interject, it felt like other than me, the managing conflict was exemplary whereas if we don't want to go all the way the other one was the three two split that would seem the I'm if comfortable that makes sense. With that. I, again I think the narrative is going to help. I think we agree that there was no argument there was quick unison on the overall rating right. so I think we overall say exemplary so we're going to put uh, managing conflict as, as exemplary we're going to put culturally proficient as proficient although we're going to write some narrative on all these. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're nearly done with the work of the night. Um, going back to step one, just to summarize. So our professional practice goals. We had one. We had it at exceeded. So I'm going to mark that overall as exceeded. Mm -hmm. Our student learning goal. We had, I believe, one which I believe we had as met. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to mark that as met. District improvement goals, we had two and a half. OK, I need help here, because how do we feel about the district improvement goals? We're, we're split. We're, we have exemplary for goal one. We have proficient for goal two, and we have doing just fine on the two-year goal, moving right along. So so you said exceeded, then met. And I think we had decided on met for goal three, depending on the language. So, Right. So for district improvement overall, where are we more comfortable? Are we more comfortable with, I mean, I don't want, again, we don't want to, we don't want to take away because of a two-year goal that we're well on track to accomplish. Yeah. So I think we should discount that out of this conversation. Yep. So we're between one is exemplary or exceeded and one is met on the other two goals, which feels right in terms of district improvement. We've, it's the COVID goal and the DEI goal. So 
So I feel like this is a little bit like when I look at the elementary report cards. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I like to look at is the narrative. Right. Um, I, I would be comfortable with exemplary, but I also don't feel like, um, yeah, I'm sorry, we're exceeded in that. I, yeah. So going back I and forth. Yeah. They're ease. They do, right. I, I would be comfortable with exceeded, but I also, um, where we're kind of looking at a, splitting the difference between two different things, I would hope that um, if we put it as met or exceeded, that the narrative of what we're saying is the piece that I would hope for Dr. Kavanaugh to, to take the heart because I think the comments are largely um, very good. Yes. yes. Exceptional. Okay. Oh, I picked up I agree with all that. So where does that land us? <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> so we, well, let's put, are we putting met? Are we putting exceeded? So we're doing that for? We have to, and on the first page, we went through all the detail, and on the first page, step one is the overall across professional practice, student learning, and district improvement. Um, so we have one exceeded professional practice, one met student learning, and now? Student learning was exceeded. No, it was met. Okay. You're right. So we have to break the tie. Um, okay. So goal one, the student achievement goal was also a district improvement goal, if that makes a difference to people. And the professional practice goal was also a district improvement goal. If you look at Dr. Kavanaugh's uh, self assessment, that doesn't help us because one was exceeded and one was met, so we're split again. <laughs> this is crazy. You don't have any loose change. If we go down, if we skip that third goal, we'll come back to that. In the step two, the summary on the standards, instructional leadership is proficient, management and operations is exemplary, mm -hmm. family and community engagement is exemplary, and professional culture is exemplary. Mm -hmm. And so um, we need to provide one overall step three rating for the summative performance, either unsatisfactory, needs improvement, proficient, or exemplary, all things added together. If it's based on step one and step two ratings, no matter what we do with the third goal thing, I think we're on exemplary. I think so. I think so, I would too. Agree with that. Okay, so all we have to do is figure out the third goal, and then we can go home, and Nancy and I will be um, receiving your, you know, if you want to revise your, your own individual writing after tonight, great. If I can get it by Tuesday, um, then we'll put it together. So just let's come to a conclusion on district improvement goals. I'm going to, well. Can we just, it, it doesn't make sense if it's 50-50 that it goes to the lower, and if it's 75% it goes to the higher? I, I don't know. I would be okay with that, simply because we had to, like, half of the committee on the COVID-19 one was originally on MET, yep. and we kind of talked people upwards a little bit. Um, so... I, I, I think that's reasonable. I mean, I think in a year when we were trying to do our best, for, and we did very well, right? you know, it's reasonable that we met. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. How are you doing? No, I'm <laughs> fine. I'm holding this up just fine. This is so, so not, hard. <laughs> not, only do you have, not only did you have to hear the deliberation, but then so next week at our May 20th meeting, we will be working off our composite, and we will officially deliver these results to the, to the community and to Dr. Kavanaugh um, in the final format without all this exchange. <laughs> I guess we've spoiled the surprise. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you it. so much for your work this year. Clearly, you. We, um, you know, you came came out with an overall. We'll talk about this later, but exemplary. But um, it's been outstanding the work you've done this year. Well, thank you, and thank you for your support. I mean, it's it's been a tricky year, and you've probably put in a million hours as volunteers you hadn't counted on. So, <laughs> all right. So I guess I will take a motion to adjourn. 
Yes, so moved. Excellent. Motion by Meg. Second. Second by Leah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, H. Cam. And thank you, Dr. Kavanaugh. We'll see you next Thursday, May 20th, for a regularly scheduled meeting. In person.